Hey guys, it's Tyler Hooks here from TechnoRC, and I'm going to show you how to properly bleed your 1.8 scale buggy emulsion shocks. This also works for our 10 scale buggies and treggies and all, all of that stuff. Uh, there's pretty much two different ways of doing it. There's the way that Joe Bornhorse does it and then the way that most of the rest of the team does it. Um, they're pretty much the same. There's just one more step for what most of us do versus what Joe does. So I'll go through both, I'll show you how to do it, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. All right, so I've got the shock in my makeshift shock stand, no bubbles, it's all ready to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the shock cap and take this bleeder screw out. Leave that on our 1.5. We'll go ahead and install the shock cap on the shock. We're gonna go ahead and put it all the way on. So go ahead and fully tighten. So I've got it hand tight, take my handy dandy techno shock tool and an MIP wrench. You can actually use the, the techno 17 millimeter wheel nut wrench and it'll tighten this as well. So once you've gotten this all tight, you've got your bleeder hole screw open. Make sure you've got a paper towel or a rag or something. You're gonna push all the way up. I had it a little full before I started, so I've got some excess. Push it all the way to the top. Go pretty slowly so you don't build up any pressure or bubbles. Keep it all the way compressed and then you're gonna insert the screw back in. All right, so if you're Joe, this is where you stop. And you go ahead and install this on your car as is. Um, some people like doing it that way. I'm not a huge fan of it. I feel like uh, once you run once or even when it settles for a couple minutes, it's actually going to build a little bit of pressure. Um, and I'm not a super huge fan of that. But basically, the, the more important part is whichever way you've been doing it or whichever way you decide to do it, try to do it like that every time. So that when you change shock fluid and things like that, if you build it differently, it's going to make your shock fluid act a little bit differently. So if you want to keep it consistent and actually know what the changes that you're making are doing, then build it the same way every time. So this would be the way that Joe would do it. He's all done. Um, the way that I like to do it is now that it's all um, assembled, everything's ready. You can see there's not really any pushback. There's no pressure, but I don't really like that pressure buildup that comes over time. So I'll go ahead and pump it fully 10 times. Compress it all the way back out and then take the screw back out. Okay. And I'll go ahead and push it all the way down one more time. Hold it with my finger, wipe off any excess that there is, and install the screw again. This just kind of simulates actually pressurizing the shock. Obviously it's gonna be a little bit different on the track, but it's a good way to kind of get it to where it's gonna be once it's actually once it's actually pressurized. As you can see, there's no, no pushback, built it dead. Um, I'm gonna to try to get one of the guys to show you guys how to build a set of bladder shocks. Um, it's a good time to have someone else do that type of thing. But this is how you build the emotion shock. This is how we build all the emotion shocks for the 10 scale cars and the eight scale cars. Um, it's pretty much as simple as that. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of emulsion and building that way. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much as simple as that and as easy as that. So we're gonna keep cranking out these videos, try to get through this, uh, this crisis that we got going on and, and we're ready to get back racing. So we'll keep bringing you guys information and uh, we hope to see you at the track soon. Thank you.